Hi, welcome to This Is. This time we're coming from Dorney Park in Allentown, Pennsylvania. I'm your host, John Oblender, and this is Dorney Park. All right, first up is Talon. It was built in 2001. It's 135 feet tall, 3,110 feet long. It's a two and a half minute ride at 58 miles per hour. Built by B&M. Talon features a vertical loop, a zero gravity roll, an Edelman, corkscrew, and two spins. This is the second one going into the brake run. Hydra is a very unique ride. It was built in 2005. It's only 95 feet tall, but it's 3,198 feet long. It's a two and a half minute ride as well, and it, but its top speed is only 53 miles per hour. Sort of a little slow for these things to go, but it's a pretty good ride. It features a JoJo roll before you go to the lift hill. It's an inversion where you literally are hanging for a moment from the ride itself. Sometimes it's a little disconcerting since your entire weight is on the harness. It's a great ride. One of the nice things about this ride is that you have a inclined loop for your first loop instead of a regular vertical. Followed by your heartline spin or zero gravity roll and two flat spins. The Cobra roll here is pretty unique because it sort of sinks down into the ground a little bit more before you head up into the roll itself. The ride itself changes elevation throughout the entire thing so it's filled with little surprises because you end up going down underneath um, the grade several times like right there and that's the last flat spin and you go into a nice little small helix and into the brake run and here's the laser the laser is one of those rides that gets around a little bit it was originally in Brazil the park bought it and, and put it installed it in 1986 it probably features the slowest lift hill of any roller coaster that I've ever seen. It's only a double looper, but it packs a wallop. On that second loop, a lot of people tend to gray out a little bit. Start seeing your vision going tunnel. It's high speed, high G back, um, high G turns make it a very exciting ride. These rides have been real popular in the past. The wild mice give you that sense of that you're going to fall right off the track, which is pretty neat. This one is one of the more new, more modern and new ones that have hit the market in the last 15 years. Uh, the older ones tend to have a little bit more force in them and not as heavily braked. Thunderhawk. This is one of the original rides in the park. Only I think one of like two or three original rides in the park. It features probably the world's shortest second hill. I mean this thing is so short that you don't even believe it's there. Gives you a little hop type of um, sensation when you go over top of it. Very unique. This is also one of the few areas of the entire park where you have a lot of trees in it. It's a nice shady little area, quiet, except for the ride going around the entire walkway area. Um, it's a figure eight coaster. It originally was an out and back. Steel Force. This ride is the king at this park. It's built in 1997. It's a 200 footer. It's 5,600 feet long. It's only a three minute ride at 75 miles per hour. 
But it's worth every penny of it. It's also one of the few Morgan manufactured roller coasters that's in the nation. There might be only about maybe five or six of them total in the entire United States. And I think about three or four of them are the 200 foot club. The ride was experiencing several difficulties the day that we were there. Um, a lot of the rides were because of the, of the high temperatures. It was like 98 degrees this day. And a lot of the electronics just weren't up to snuff. But you expect this on a very big day like this. As a result, I wasn't able to get a lot of footage when I wanted to get it of this ride. So I was only able to get the first drop and the second hill. It features one of the best turnarounds of any roller coaster in the entire world. It has a nice helix that just seems like it never stops. We've seen these top spin rides all over the place before, but this one has a little bit of a, I guess, a terror sensation in it. See that nice fountain in the bottom there? Well, that water gets pretty close to you and you think it's going to just drench you. It just builds and builds and builds. And there it is. You think it's going to hit you, and it doesn't. It slaps the back of the bottom of the vehicle, and you might get a little spray off of it. This officially is the only whitewater landing ride at any Cedar Fair Park. Since the departure of the one at Cedar Point, this is Whitewater Landing, and aptly named. If you want to get wet on a ride, this is the one to do it on. Their oldest water ride is the Thunder Mountain Creek, I believe it's called, or Thunder Creek Mountain. It's a, basically a shoot, a cur shoot the curls, but it's, the neat thing about it is it's built into the hillside. This is a very neat way of using some of the land at the park. The park itself is set on about three or four different terraces, so you end up going up and down hill a lot in this park. It seems like every single park has to have one of these revolution rides or something similar to it. I don't really care for this type and model. It's a great, it's a good ride, but I just don't like sitting inward and watching the person across from me turn green. It's just not something I'm really keen on doing. Some people enjoy it. I don't. That one individual there that line jumped was escorted out of the park. Don't do that. It's not worth it. They were also a season pass holder and their passes were confiscated. That you don't want to happen to yourself. So don't do any line jumping. It ruins your entire day. Here's another original ride to the park called the Whip. It has probably one of the best buildings in what I consider a major park. In the class like Dorney, Hershey, um, Juggle Lake, that tier of, of parks, Kennywood. This is a classic ride in a classic building. 
and it's still fun today. Yeah, a lot of nice action on it, and it's just a, a blast from the past. There's not much you get else you can say about it. It's a, fa it's a ride that the entire family can go on and have a, l a real blast on. You can see how they whip you out around the corner here. It does approve a pretty good amount of force, but it's still just a, a fun family ride. I wish there was other parks that would have this. This is another ironic thing. It seems like all Pennsylvania parks have this ride in it somewhere. Here's a classic, a scrambler. That's about all you can say about it. Left this shot in here because just to give you an idea of how many people were actually in the park, um, the park was actually quite busy, and a lot of the people were ended up in the water park, which I didn't cover in this because I couldn't do it justice. Um, the fact, and also the fact that it's sort of hard to get camera equipment in pools and stuff. It just does some things to the electronics you know. Dominator is one of those rides that you have to ride both going up and going down. There's the going up one. Here's a family favorite, the Tilt a Whirl. I believe this is a junior edition of it. They're still fun. And we get to see some very interesting people coming off of it. If they can remember how to walk. The Three Point Challenge. This is the new addition to most of the Cedar Fair parks. Um, the best one is at Cedar Point, naturally. But this one is a pretty good example of that. Um, seems like every single park has to have one of these now. And the people out front that were running the game were pretty good at getting people to try it out. This is Apollo. This is sort of an unusual ride. I've only seen maybe two models of this. And there's two different um, programs that you can use on it. This uses the more uncommon one where each, every other vehicle swings out and not all of them at once. It's a fun ride. As you can see how they swing in and out. There's two game areas in the park. This is the one that's sort of in the middle of the park 
one down down on one of the plateaus. And this is the main games area. Talon in the background there. Has two different sides to it. This is the one side from the gate towards Talon. And this is around the turn going from that gate side towards Talon. This is just another one, a shot of one of the midways. This was on Memorial at Memorial Day weekend when I took this footage. And there's actually a lot of people in the park, but like again, like I said, most of them ended up in the water park. There's always something for the little ones to do. Another nice thing about this park I like to see is the sign, the carriage signs. It used to be that all the Cedar Fair parks had those signs. Now only it seems like Dorney has them. I haven't been to any of the other Cedar Fair parks, but I always liked these signs because it, it was one of those things that was so welcoming at this park compared to the other parks. Their own little identity to the park. Another classic ride, the Monster. This one is taking on passengers at this time. Another fun flat ride at this park. More activities for the young set. This has a bouncy, one of those air, air mattresses. And here comes the odd ride. Is it a coaster or is it a flat ride? Or is it a combination of the two? I still don't know. And then you have the little laser. A roller coaster for the young set. Um, this one actually is a pretty good little kitty coaster. Um, naturally I was not able to ride on it, but it was still a pretty good coaster. Probably the most unusual bumper cars in all parks. The only problem with them is their gasoline engines. And another classic, m the music box. Always has some pretty good music going on around this area of the park from the ride. And sets the atmosphere in this area of the park. These rides have been in many parks as well, but this one's sort of unique. I could only get it from this angle because it actually goes up above a gift shop. And I wish I could have gotten around to the front of it, but I didn't have tape enough to do that at this time, maybe at another time. And it would be a Cedar Fair Park without a Camp Snoopy. This one's actually a pretty big Camp Snoopy compared to some of the other ones. And there's always a lot of activities here to do. They have their Woodstock Express, another kitty coaster, which makes this park have two kitty coasters. And there's a Woodstock themed helicopter ride
Charlie Brown has his own ride. And even Snoopy has his own ride. With the Snoopy Flying Ace. Basically it's one of those swinging ship rides with a Red Baron theme going for it. And what would a Cedar Fair Park or Camp Snoopy for that matter be without the camp bus? This one's very neat because you can actually see the Phoenix characters as if they were sitting in the seats in the background. A lot of the other ones don't have that bit of detail. This is the only non Peanuts themed ride in the entire Camp Snoopy. Though it probably could be said that it's Peanuts themed, but I haven't figured that one out yet. It's the And then we come to the Beagle Outfitters. It's a pretty big gift shop for anything Snoopy. And I do mean anything Snoopy. And I think they even had a leather jacket in there, bomber jacket, for like a thousand dollars. Alright, here's your reality check. Ticket price is $36.95. Average food cost about $7. Cotton candy, which is the real bargain here, is $0.25. Cents. Your park value is $1.02. That's taking the ticket price and dividing it by the number of rides.